Praise God, Daryl McManus here, and we're here with another edition of Word Break, and we're in a, this is a very powerful series, so I encourage you to share it, share this series with the, with, um, if you're on Facebook, follow us, ask us to be your friend, or share it, if you're watching this by YouTube, please like our, our, um, the video, subscribe to our channel, share it with as much people as possible this is a life-changing series doors I must keep shut and this is part five and so we're still on door number two and we we won't be finished with door number two today we're it's such a big door but let's get right into it you know I woke up today before I even got into my travailing room and I was in the kitchen and doing some things, getting some coffee ready, and the fire of God just hit me before I even got into my travailing room. So I know the fire of God is present right now. And so whatever it is that you need in your life, I just release the fire of God, God's all-consuming fire to consume all of your problems, consume all of your sicknesses, uh, diseases, poverty, financial problems, strife, whatever is going on in your life, the fire of God's present. And that fire is moving right where you're at, into your room, into your vehicle, wherever it is in the world that you're watching this. Lord, we thank you for your fire. Now, as we get into uh, the door of division, the second door, continuing the Lord had me go into Proverbs um, chapter 6 and so Proverbs chapter 6 so I got different resources here so I've got physical Bible I've got another I got another phone here apps and different things and so Proverbs chapter 6 starting with verse 16 says this these six things the Lord hates. If you want to be successful in life, you need to love what God loves and you need to hate what he hates. And so, yes, seven are an abomination to him. Here they are, starting with verse 17. A proud look. See, God resists the proud, but he gives grace or favor to the humble. A lying tongue. You want to know who's going to be in the lake of fire? Read Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. And it says all liars, that's one of the categories, will, will have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is burning sulfur. The next one is hands that shed innocent blood. Um, verse 18, a heart that devises wicked plans. And then feet that are swift in running to evil. Verse 19, a false witness who speaks lies. And so God's dealing with lies again. And then the last one, and this is the one that's connected with this door of division. And one who sows discord among brethren. One who sows discord among brethren. Now, there is a popular app or messaging center or whatever you want to call it you can send messages you can send videos and it's gained a lot of popularity and it's it's the problem is the name is wrong it's called discord and see god hates god hates somebody that sows discord among the brethren so you may say what is discord well, uh, the definition of discord means a lack of agreement or harmony, active quarreling. Let's see, God hates somebody that's, that's causing quarrels or conflict resulting from discord among persons or factions. Or, or discord means strife. The Hebrew word, M-A-D-O-N, Madon 
means dissension, quarrel, strife, contention. And so, discord, God hates it. He hates somebody that sows discord because discord breeds division. Now, Here's another passage the Lord wanted me to bring to you today. And it's in Titus uh, chapter 3, verse 10. Uh, but it's, it's in the NIV. My favorite, you say, how many translations do I need? As many as you can get, because that's all they are. Because the original Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And so... You need as many translations as you can get. And so I love this. In Titus chapter 3, verse 10 says, Warn. You know, what do you do with somebody that keeps causing division? Warn a divisive person once. And then, now if they don't stop, and then warn them a second time. Now, God only gives them a second time to see if they're going to stop. Notice what it says after that. After that, have nothing to do with them. So, when you warn a divisive person as much as two times, and they keep causing division, whether it's in your family, whether it's in a church, whether it's in um, it's in a uh, an employment situation where you've got employees, you warn them once. You warn them twice, and if they cause division again, the Bible says have nothing to do with it. That means you have to cut them off. You have to separate yourselves because a divisive person is a cancer. And what does cancer do? It metastasizes. It spreads all over the body. And so you have to cut it off. All right. Now, last session, we dealt with what I call the zebra effect. How that a lion cannot just devour zebras when they're in the pack because all they see is just continuous lines. See, because they're together in unity. But if one zebra becomes isolated, that lion will attack that zebra and eat it for prey. So, division always breeds isolation the enemy wants to isolate you from the body of christ that you're supposed to be a part of and notice this an isolation breeds death now look at ephesians chapter 4 beginning with verse 1 it says i therefore the prisoner of the lord entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing forbearance to one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We're supposed to be diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So, God birth an entire series in me a number of years ago called the prayers in Ephesians it's a life-changing series and out of that series God gave me my own version studying the original language of the prayers in Ephesians Ephesians chapter 1 chapter 3 I don't have there and we had them printed somebody printed them for us in bookmarks and we're almost totally out of them and I need to get them reprinted because there you need to like put those like in a bookmark in your Bible so that you can pray these prayers every day. And so in, in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 through 19, and this is the MacManus version. This is my version after studying the original Greek. Verse 18, that your inner man may be may fully perceive god's expected calling for your life and that you may know what is the well of god's inheritance which resides in the sphere of the saints 
so that you may know and understand the unlimited and immeasurable greatness of God's power that is constantly abiding in you. Now, I trust that you're in the body of believers that God has planted you in. The old saying, bloom where you're planted, that's a lie from the enemy. There are people that try to bloom where they're planted and they totally miss the will of God. You need to you need to ask God, where do you want me to assemble? What body of believers do you want me to be a part of? And then you need to bloom there. Because see, the sphere of the saints is when we're assembled together. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says this, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together. There's as believers, there's a there's a whole lie going across the world right now that you don't have to come together as a body of believers. You don't have to assemble. That's a lie from the enemy. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. See, division is designed to pull you away from where you're supposed to be assembling so that you'll fall short of what God's called you to do. Now, there, there are some things that that you'll never be able to accomplish without assembling together in the body of believers that God's called you to be a part of. Notice there are three powerful things that take place in your life. Number one, you will fully perceive God's expected calling for your life. Number two, you, you will be able knowing the wealth of God's inheritance in the saints. And number three, knowing and understanding the unlimited and immeasurable greatness of God's power that is constantly abiding in you. That the entire body of Christ across the world could walk in these three areas. We'd see a worldwide explosion of revival virtually overnight. Now, this is a powerful, powerful door that we're covering that we must close and keep closed the door of division. We're going to continue next word break. You don't want to miss it. God bless you.